What is up everybody? I am here with another video and this time it's about soldering. I see a lot of videos on the net and people try to explain soldering but they're leaving out a few things and I want to just kind of fill in those gaps for you guys. So I have a bunch of tools laid out. I'm going to show you some soldering techniques um, and some splices and the difference between taps and splices and what kind of connectors you should have. So I'm going to start over here on this end. Uh, you should have a good assortment of wire. Uh, it can be tinned or non-tinned wire. It's up to you. Um, and then you can have, uh, I, this is just like a fishing tackle box that I bought and then I just filled it up with all the kind of gear that I, that I might uh, use. So I have like my battery terminals and stuff like that. I have uh, various wire brushes uh, and also um, I have some household wire connectors. I have um, non-insulated terminals and let's see, lots of uh, shrink wrap as you can see, more wiring. Um, I also, let's see here, I have this heat shield bracket that I made. Um, it's a pretty cool thing to have. <clears throat> And let's see what else. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then various size wires. I also have some butt connectors that are really cool. Um, these things uh, also um, shrink as you apply heat to them. So once you crimp the wires together, then you take your heat gun and then you shrink down the uh, tubing and then uh, you have a good seal and the the shrink wrap on this or the heat shrink on this uh, has a uh, glue uh, insulation or it has glue on the inside so that glue will melt and it'll give you an airtight seal. So moving on we have our chem wipes. Chem wipes are very important uh, when you're cleaning your soldering iron so we'll get to that later. Safety first, always wear good safety goggles and if you can, some protection for your clothing. <clears throat> gloves, I would, I would recommend to wear gloves, but they are optional just because you get a little bit better dexterity with your fingertips. So if you're gonna use your fingertips and not use gloves, then just make sure you wash your hands because you're gonna be handling lead and lead is a toxic material. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, moving on, have a good brush. Have a good solder sucker. Uh, this removes solder uh, in case you make any kind of mistakes uh, and you need to correct your work. Uh, so have one of these around, it's really good. Also, you can have a solder wick. It's a uh, braided copper and pretty much what that does is show you, let's see, I think I got a piece right here. So solder wick is really good too for removing uh, solder, excess solder. You'll apply some flux on the solder wick. You'll lay that over your work. You'll heat your work and then that'll pull the excess solder into the wick. And then from there you can remove your work that you have um, applied to either your board or another wire, etc. It's also good to have some good wire cutters. Um, that leaves a flat edge. These are okay, but I'll put a link down in the description for some really good ones. And uh, that helps with um, just kind of trimming edges around wires, especially when you're doing wire splices and you don't want excess wire poking into your heat shrink. Have a good um, solvent. And for solvents and soldering, use either denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I'm using 99% isopropyl alcohol. Denatured alcohol is good, but sometimes it leaves a film on circuit boards. So <clears throat> if you're okay with that, by all means use denatured alcohol. Other than that, uh, isopropyl is really good. Uh, have some kind of dispenser for your flux. Uh, this is a flux dispenser and you wanna use flux. Um, rosin mildly activated flux is good and no clean flux, which is what this is. I'm using no clean. It's really good for circuit boards, 
but it still works well on wires. Have a good assortment of tips because depending on your work, uh, you're going to need to use either a small tip or a large tip and that's going to uh, play a big huge factor when heat is applied to your work. So if you use a large tip on a small uh, surface area, then it's going to heat the work too fast and you can burn things and it's a big mess. And then same with if you use a small tip on a large piece of mass, then <clears throat> a large surface area, then um, it's not going to heat as fast and you're going to take too long to heat your work and things can get out of control that way. Uh, another thing is to have a good soldering station uh, with a good iron and I like this kind of iron um, where you have an adjustable temperature and you also have a, a spool to, to hold a, a railing to hold your solder and to hold your sponge. It's a really cool really cool soldering iron so pick up a good soldering iron. Also um, pick up some wire mesh that's really good too. Uh, it cleans your iron tip really well. Also pick up some helping hands. Uh, they're great for holding circuit boards, wires, resistors, anything where you just need an extra pair of hands and so you can solder them and you know not have to worry about fumbling everything or holding multiple things in your hands. So these are really great. Um, must have. Sometimes the alligator clips will puncture your insulation if you're clipping them onto wires because the, the wire will get hot from the soldering. So one thing you want to do is make sure that you apply your alligator clips to the wire and not the insulation and that'll act as a heat sink and then that way all the heat will go uh, from the wire into the alligator clips and you won't have to worry about your insulation uh, getting damaged. So we'll go on into wire strippers. Uh, the best wire strippers or I should say my favorite wire strippers that I like to use are the Ideal Strip Masters and the Ideal Strip Master Customs. Um, the customs are more expensive. These go for about like $200 and but they're mil spec and the difference between mil spec and just regular over-the-counter type wire strippers is that the mil specs are they have a, the teeth, the jaws in them are not sharp. It's kind of just more like a, it just bites down on the insulation and it just separates it. So you don't nick wires or cut wire strands with the customs, the strip, the strip master customs. Um, that's, that's the really important thing because what happens is when you start uh, stripping wires, sometimes you can nick them or even cut them and then that can cause uh, resistance or, or maybe even some type of electrical uh, malfunction later. And uh, if, if you're building something where reliability is huge, then you almost 100% want to use these so that you don't nick any kind of wires. Uh, but if it's something just small time and, and reliability is not too big of a deal, these are excellent. And you can also cheat you can cheat the wire stripping by just stripping a wire uh, to the next uh, American wattage gauge size. So for example, if you have a 14 uh, gauge wire, then you can just place it in a 12 gauge uh, hole and then strip it that way. And then you, you'll get a clean strip. So that's something to do if you don't want to buy the customs, but the customs are awesome. And I have a set of these just, just to cut wire. And also if I do need to strip something really quick, um, this takes obviously a little, little bit more technique because you have to hold the wire in such a way so that you don't nick anything. But these are still really awesome. Um, highly recommend it. Have a good heat gun because the heat gun is going to be used to uh, shrink down that heat shrink to protect your to protect your work, your solder joints, uh, especially for wiring and things like that once you're finished. So a good heat gun is required. All right, so let's get into wire crimping. Um, these are really big wire crimpers <clears throat> and 
This gives a hex crimp, so it gives an even crimp uh, all the way around uh, the terminal to just make sure that it has a good point of contact. And the difference between crimping and soldering is that the whole idea is that uh, soldering, uh, it can kind of break loose with vibration over time, whereas crimps do not. Uh, crimps is more permanent. <clears throat> but uh, each one has its po you know, positives and negatives, so it's up to you what you want to do. I, per I personally feel that if you use a good solder technique, then soldering is the way to go. Buy wire crimpers that have replaceable jaws so that you can buy insulated crimping jaws and non-insulated crimping jaws, and then that way uh, you don't have to buy multiple ratcheting uh, crimpers. But if you prefer that method, by all means, go ahead. So the yellow ones right here that I'm holding now are for insulated um, terminals, and that would be something like <clears throat> this. So this ring terminal has this yellow jacket around it and these these, crimp, this, these crimpers are designed to crimp this terminal with the insulation on it. So if you try to, let's say for example, take a non-insulated terminal and try to crimp it, then the wire will be loose and you can pull it out and then you'll be complaining that you know, these don't work, these ratcheting crimps that I just bought don't work, but they do. It's just that you have to use them for insulated terminals. And here's another set that's for non-insulated terminals. And I, I use these a lot uh, since I like to use uh, non-insulated terminals a lot more uh, just because that I can, um, you know, use my own heat shrink and everything like that. And I use heat shrink with a uh, glue lining, which I like better. So I use these more. Uh, really great tool. All of these tools will be in the description below with a link to go check them out. So moving on, I made this guy right here and it is a vacuum because what happens is you will develop smoke from soldering and that smoke is, well, let's just say it's not good for you. It's not lead, you're not breathing in lead. A lot of people will say that you're breathing in lead, but uh, lead boils at a much higher temp than what um, the soldering iron will, will get to. So really the soldering iron is just melting the lead, it's not boiling it. So that smoke that you're seeing, that vapor that's coming up, that's from the flux. And uh, flux, well it's not toxic, but it's still not good for you and it's led to a lot of occupational hazard health and uh, things like that. So you don't want to breathe that. So make sure you build or buy some type of uh, fan that like exhaust fan that you can use near, near your station. Um, I'll put down a link in the description for this. Pretty much I just bought a PC fan, the strongest one I could find. Uh, with and then I found a wall charger that had a high amps. Uh, that matched the fan, put that together, went to my hardware store, bought some exhaust tubing, little connector, put it all together, sealed off any little um, gaps with duct tape, and I have my exhaust for a really cheap price. Um, let's see, so another thing, let's talk about solder itself. And uh, there's all types of solders. There's 50-50, there's 60-40. 60-40 is the most common solder that you will find on the market, and that's probably the one you'll be using. But there's another one that's even better, and it's called eutectic solder. And that's what this is, and you can find that from Kester. And the cool thing with eutectic solder is that the mixture is a little different. I think it's like 63% um, 10 and 30, 37% lead, um, or maybe it's the other way around. But the cool thing with that is that um, with 60-40 mixture, um, the solder still takes a while to solidify after, after you finish doing work. And so what happens is if you move it, then it can mess up, the solder can move and it can create a bad solder joint. 
Whereas a uh, eutectic solder, it solidifies almost instantly. So the cool thing is that right after you finish soldering, it solidifies and your work is more reliable. So it's something to look out for. I'll put a link in the description for that if you're interested. And I think that is it, everyone. So I will show you guys a few. Let's see what I have here. I have some wires here that I was playing around with that I uh, sh will show you guys how I soldered uh, in a minute. But yeah, these are two solder joints that I recommend. And if you are using large, large um, gauge wire, let's say like 14, 18, um, then you can use what's called a lash splice. And pretty much that is just laying two wires together and then wrapping them with a wire, like a strand of wire, wrapping that really tight and then soldering them together. And then that'll give you a really good connection. If you have smaller wire, let's say 20 gauge and lower or smaller, then you can use what's called a Western Union splice. And that's where you just take a long strip of wire that you've cut and then, um, or that you've stripped, and then you cross the halves and then you twist one side, let's say going to the right uh, three rotations, and then you twist the other side going to the left three rotations, and then you solder that together. Because the most important thing is you want a good connection, uh, not so much as just relying on the solder to hold everything in place, but you want to make sure that the wire itself is um, connected to the other wire so that you have, a good, you have a good mechanical connection. And then the solder will act to bridge in any gaps and give you that just added reliability. So um, that's really important that you have a good physical connection. And that's why I recommend these two um, splices, which is this one's the Western Union and this one is a lash splice. So really good, really good um, connections to use, and I recommend both of them. So with all that being said, um, if I left anything out, let me know. I'll go ahead and make another video to kind of cover things up, but that pretty much sums it up, and I hope this has just shed some light on you guys for us how to solder. Um, when you're dealing with automotive uh, wiring, most of the times you're going to be crimping anyway, I would say, unless you're going to kind of add something in, maybe like a stereo sound unit or something like that, then you're going to want to solder. But for as like making any kind of wire harness or anything like that, usually you're going to use pins and uh, that's all going to be crimps. So uh, pick up a good set of wire crimps, pick up a good soldering iron, and also pick up some good solder along with building your kit as you go along. You don't have to buy everything all at once. Uh, I didn't, I just kind of built it up as I went along. So that's pretty much it, yeah. The main things you'll need is gonna be just your solder, soldering iron, and um, some wire crimps, and heat gun, and the exhaust, and you can get away. You can even use a fan, really, for the exhaust, so it's not too big of a deal if you don't have one. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's the most important thing. Make sure you get some kind of cleaning uh, unit so that you can clean your tip. And also you wanna make sure that after you're done soldering that you um, tin your tip so that it doesn't uh, corrode and it'll just, it'll just protect your tip a lot more. Uh, it'll make it last a lot longer. So yeah, with all those things, uh, I hope that this sheds light on you guys for his, uh, soldering. And if you have any questions, post a comment down below and see you guys next time.